Hi, PerspectiveWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Tuesday, July 21st, a continuation of hot and humid conditions in the Mid-Atlantic region, although it may become a bit less oppressive today, especially north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border following the passage of a weak frontal system. It may knock off a couple of degrees and maybe a little bit in terms of overall humidity level, but that weak frontal system will stall out across Virginia likely become the focus area for some shower and thunderstorm activity later today, especially tonight and on Wednesday. And then another frontal system will approach from the northwest on Thursday. That front also will become the focus area for some shower and thunderstorm activity in the mid-Atlantic region. Any thunderstorm that forms later today, tonight, or uh, tomorrow and Thursday can be on the strong to severe side in the mid-Atlantic region. There's a lot of potential energy out there in the atmosphere given the high heat and a lot of available moisture. And again, we'll have a better chance of showers and thunderstorms over the next few days as compared with the last few days, which were largely rain-free in the Mid-Atlantic region. And again, any storm that forms during the midweek time frame into Thursday, Thursday night can be on the strong to severe side in the Mid-Atlantic region. Well, let's start off today by talking about Comet Neowise, then we'll uh, look at the tropical situation in the Atlantic Basin, and then the overall weather pattern across the nation. First of all, Comet Neowise reaches its closest point to Earth over the next couple of days, and after that it'll start pulling away. It's become a little bit dimmer in the last few days. In uh, many areas it's almost impossible now to see with the naked eye. You have to be in a, a dark location, very low humidity, left, like for example out in the western part of the nation. Uh, but it is still relatively high up in the sky. This is the way it will appear this evening, maybe an hour or two after sunset. Right in this region right here, we're looking to the northwest part of the sky around 310 degrees or so. You see the degrees marked here on this particular sky map. That's available on spaceweather.com. If you point your compass to about 310 degrees and then look up, you may see the comet here with the naked eye if you're in a real dark location with uh, minimal humidity. But uh, otherwise, resort to the binoculars. You should be able to see Comet Neowise. And here is the Big Dipper. And that's what you want to uh, first focus in on, the Big Dipper right here. And then look just below that, maybe an hour or two after sunset really just another few days uh, for good viewing conditions for this comet. After it pulls away from the Earth uh, over the next uh, couple of days, it will become even fainter and fainter. Well, let's now take a look at the tropical situation. Last week we pointed out a few different waves, tropical waves over the continent of Africa. Indeed, they have moved into the Atlantic Basin, and there are a couple more waves out over the continent of Africa of Africa. These waves move from east to west this time of the year riding along in the trade winds and we now have first of all one wave has moved ashore so it has uh, no chance of development at this point because it's inland nonetheless it's causing a lot of rainfall across places like eastern Texas and uh, parts of Louisiana. Another wave sits right in this area right here and that will continue to move to the west to northwest into the Gulf of Mexico. We'll monitor that. A third wave sitting right here. And this one has a pretty decent shot at development over the next 48 hours or so as it too continues to move along in a west to north direction. It's out over the open waters of the tropical Atlantic. Has some decent sea surface temperatures underneath it. Very warm waters in most cases above normal for this time of the year. So that has a chance for some de development and we'll co obviously monitor that over the next couple of days. Then we look at Africa and this is the African continent right here. Notice a nice wave right here. A couple other waves, tropical waves also showing up on the imagery, this particular imagery map from the University of Wisconsin website. All of these riding along in those trade winds from the east to the west and another wave also right at the west coast of Africa. So again the next couple of weeks will certainly become more active compared to the last couple of weeks in the Atlantic Basin. We'll monitor all these different tropical waves as the Atlantic Basin hurricane season starts to ramp up 
as we approach the month of August. And this is the official map drawn this morning by the National Hurricane Center based in Miami. It's an organization within NOAA. Again, one tropical wave has already moved inland over Texas, so that has little or no chance for further development. This particular wave, northern part of Cuba, will enter into the Gulf of Mexico, so it certainly has some chance for some in, in, uh, intensification over the next couple of days, and we'll continue to monitor that. That also in a general west to northwest direction. And here's that third wave, and this has perhaps of the three the best chance of development because it's got a lot of time to spend over the open waters of the warm tropical Atlantic here. It's moving more on a westerly direction for now, and we'll monitor that over the next few days. And again, we saw some additional waves over the continent of Africa that will spill out over the uh, Atlantic Ocean over the next few days. So again, it looks like an uh, increasingly active period over the remainder of July and as we go into the month of August. Well, let's now focus in on the continental U.S. and we'll, we'll, we'll take a look here at the operational run of the GFS from 6Z. First of all, a lot of energy in the upper part of the atmosphere over the next few days. We have uh, definitely a better chance of showers and thunderstorms over the next few days as compared with the last few days, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Very hot days in the mid-Atlantic region, but largely rain-free. Yesterday's temperatures peaked at Philadelphia International Airport at 96 degrees. In the D.C. metro region, 99 was a magic number at both Dulles Airport, IAD, and Reagan National Airport. And BWI uh, hit the 100-degree mark on uh, Monday. Again, maybe a couple of degrees less than that today following the passage of a weak frontal system. By the way, Central Park in New York City topped out at 93 degrees yesterday. But let's move forward here over the next few days and look at the 500 millibar vorticity field. Vorticity is uh, kind of an area of spin in the upper part of the atmosphere and leads to upward motion in the uh, lower middle parts of the atmosphere. That can lead to thunderstorm activity this time of the year. We'll notice here over, over the next few evenings, the prime time for thunderstorm activity will have some energy over the mid-Atlantic region. This is the beginning of the day on Tuesday, but right here, a little weak area showing up here in yellow and orange over the I-95 car this evening, that's Tuesday evening, enhancing the chance for showers and thunderstorms in that time frame. Then we move forward here Wednesday, and here we are now by Wednesday evening, another area of energy here as seen here by the yellows and oranges right over the I-95 corridor region on Wednesday evening. And again, any thunderstorm that forms late today, late tomorrow, and even late Thursday can be on the strong to severe side with a lot of uh, uh, energy in the atmosphere. Then let's m move forward to late Thursday, and here we are on Thursday night. And this is a kind of a broader area of troughiness in the upper part of the atmosphere, the low pressure aloft with a strong wave of energy with a stronger front on Thursday night, and that too could result in some shower and thunderstorm activity in the mid-Atlantic region and the northeast U.S. That frontal system should usher in uh, somewhat more comfortable air for Friday and Saturday in the mid-Atlantic region. Many areas holding in the upper 80s for highs uh, on Saturday and Friday as well with a little bit less in the way of humidity. Looks like it does get pretty hot again by the early part of next week. Well, speaking of temperatures, let's now take a look at the 850 millibar temperature anomalies from the operational run of the GFS. These are the temperature anomalies a couple thousand feet off the uh, above the surface level. It gives us a good idea of uh, the change in atmosphere here. We're starting off the day above normal conditions throughout much of the mid-Atlantic region. Let's move forward here. Again, another hot day. Uh, certainly the low to mid-90s north of the Mason-Dixon line, maybe the mid to upper 90s across the uh, D.C. metro region once again. Maybe a couple of degrees less than yesterday, but still hot and humid. That kind of heat and humidity sticks around on Wednesday. Notice upstream, we have a little bit of a break here showing up over the Great Lakes by the time we get to Thursday morning. One more hot and humid day in the mid-Atlantic region on Thursday in the northeast U.S. With the approach of that next frontal system, a kind of a stronger frontal system, we'll have 
also a chance of showers and, and thunderstorms, but just upstream we see cooler than normal air, and indeed that moves into the mid-Atlantic region by Friday. Here we are showing up a little bit cooler than normal or near normal throughout much of the mid-Atlantic region and northeast U.S. It may take a little bit of a while on Friday for that relief to be uh, more noticeable in the I-95 Carter region. We'll kind of focus in on that timing over the next couple of days. Basically, this near normal air mass moves in for Friday and Saturday as well. But notice here already starting to warm up substantially over the northern plains. And indeed, it looks like it uh, becomes warmer than normal here in the mid-Atlantic region, northeast U.S. during the early part of next week. So any break in the action in terms of the heat and humidity will come on Friday and Saturday, but then we get back to rather hot conditions again uh, by Sunday and Monday of next week. Well, let's now focus in on the surface forecast maps from the GFS, and we'll notice here uh, a decent shot at showers and thunderstorms each afternoon over the next few days, uh, both later today and tonight, and especially on Wednesday and Thursday. Again, any storm that forms can be on the strong side over the next couple of days. A little bit of activity going on this morning, but it becomes a little bit more widespread by the time we go into the overnight hours here. The notice here up and down the I-95 car, at least from D.C. to Philadelphia, maybe even in New York City, there could be a shower or thunderstorm uh, anytime from at the end of the day today, but perhaps a little bit more likely overnight tonight. Again, any storm can be on the strong side. Let's move into the day on Wednesday. Here we are. Uh, perhaps an enhanced chance of strong thunderstorms later tomorrow, tomorrow night. It looks like can be some strong to severe thunderstorm activity later Wednesday into Wednesday night, again with a pretty good wave of energy in the upper part of the atmosphere. And that is not the end of the story. As we go into the day on Thursday, we'll have that next frontal system approaching from the northwest, and that too will result in some scattered showers and thunderstorms any one of those storms can be on the strong side as well. And then we'll get into a little bit of a break in the action in terms of the heat and humidity. Uh, uh, more seasonal conditions ex expected on Friday and Saturday. Cannot rule out a shower or a thunderstorm on either day. But again, a little bit of a break in the action in the oppressive heat and humidity uh, for Friday and Saturday. But that will be rather short-lived, and the breeze will increase out of the southwest on Sunday. Looks like it will return to perhaps 90 degrees for highs in many parts of the uh, mid-Atlantic region by Sunday afternoon. And that uh, hotter than normal weather, it looks like it will continue into the early part of next week. So watch out for some potential strong thunderstorms over the next few days with a continuation of more heat and humidity. Some relief, however, comes to the northeastern quadrant of the nation for Friday and Saturday. That's it for now. For PerspectiveWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.